Are you drinking more tea? No wonder it's taking you 10 years to do anything on your car. Oh, I've no need for that. You just carry on with what you're doing there, yeah? I suppose you don't want any tea then, do you? I think I'll call you Mr. T from now on. Well, Truvies, we're back for our next instalment of our engine dismantling. I keep calling it an engine. It just I don't know. It looks like an engine to me. So I keep. I know it's electric motor. Our electric motor dismantling. So what we're going to do is have another bit of tea. Right. What we're going to plan on doing now, our mate old Stavros down here, if he stops whining about all these brakes that I keep having, I'm going to go ahead next. I think. We'll get him to take the inverter head off. Is that alright Mr. Selector down there? Yeah, that's great Mr. T. Hello. Right, we'll leave Mr. T over there drinking his tea. We'll carry on with this. What I'd like to do first is, is remove this plate that says do not remove this plate because I think the three phases, buzz bars, come down to the from the inverter down into the motor. So what I want to do, obviously I can't take the inverter off because it's still strapped on here, but I might just crack a few nuts. I could probably separate a couple of nuts maybe. The actual inverter is only this big here, if you can see, it's only that much, but it does, seems to drop overhang when it gets to this side of the, the motor assembly, it sort of drops down. I think the inverter's mounted upright. I don't think I'll be taking the lid off at this stage for the inverter, I've got no real reason to. What I want to do is strip this down, get the inverter off, but for test for just to get it disassembled at the moment, and then uh, then we can see the three blades for coming down into the motor. But then what I'm going to do is temporarily hook up the inverter back onto it again, because once this is all stripped, I want to move on to the next phase, which will be I'll introduce the controller that I've got, and I'd like to start setting it up. So before this even remotely gets near the car. I'd like to see this running on the floor. Enough rambling. Oh, Mr. T over there is going to make me a cup of tea in a minute, aren't you, Mr. T? Oh, I don't have the security screws for these. I've just got the standard ones, the standard star bits. I don't have the... But what I might try and do for now is just get this cracked open, I think. Hopefully the pliers, the long nose, the gas pliers will release it, I hope. That's probably more just to that's probably more of an added locking feature that maybe that extra little plate. Don't know, it doesn't need to go on for the time being, so I'll probably put it back on, so. Got one off. Okay, that's quite good now. There we have it. Should we give it the lick test, see if they're still live? We'll let Mr. T do that. Let's put that to one side. Right, where's our... Uh... Right, Mr. T, what you done with the socket I gave you the other day? I don't know. I left him on his own for 10 minutes the other day and he's lost all the tools. Oh, cheers, mate. Thank you. Right, let's see if we can crack this... Uh... Get these, we're inside the three phase buzz bar now. You can see the three connections. I'm shocked how the connections are. They're really not that tight. I don't know, I suppose it has stopped stripping threads, but it doesn't feel there's any real tension on these. And I noticed with the uh, charger ones as well, they weren't that tight. There's one bolt out. So it looks like six bolts holding the inverter to the bottom mounting of the gearbox and motor assembly. So these are not what I've read between the lines. This gearbox is literally a single speed. There's no automatic. It's just a single gear. <clears throat> just a single gear gearbox it's not even like a CVT as you get with some of those Hondas and things where I think it's like a variable transmission I think it's just literally it's just a solid single locked gear it's very minimal what's in there I shouldn't start doing anything here I don't think on my toes 
I might just crack these loose. I don't want anything falling on the floor. That'd be sad, wouldn't it? The engine falls, the motor falls on the floor and cracks and splits. I need to go ahead and remove the coolant pipe as well that links the motor links the motor to the inverter. Let's spin it round. There's only six holding this, which is good. Same as the charger, that's loose. I'm going to put it on the floor in a minute. Okay. Right, let's get it down on the floor. <clears throat> right, we'll come back, we'll get it on the floor and we'll carry on moving them nuts. These nuts. Get these six bolts off. We'll have to just take the top off. Let's go ahead and get these coolant hoses off. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's still stuff in there. I thought there'd be no stuff in there, but there is. Whoa! Oh, I've got antifreeze all over the floor, or cooler. Right, let's get this stuff out of the way. There's my hose. Coolant hose, another coolant hose to collection. Should mark these really. I suppose it's a bit obvious that one goes there, is it? Or will I be struggling later on? More tea, Stavros! Right, theoretically, this should just lift off now. Famous last words. I think they've got locking dowels on these, like these have got. Um, where the charger sat on, there's two locking dowels here. I suspect there must be locking dowels for the inverter. Okay, we're inverter free. The inverter is free. And I'm dribbling coolant everywhere. Right, I need to be careful not to bend the blades on this now. So I need to stand this in such a way where it's not going to bend the blades. Okay, stay there. Stay there, girl. Right, that's what we're left with now. Here you go, mate. No, not now. Please, Mr. T. Right, what we got left is the motor and the gearbox. So obviously you've got we've got still got three big parts which are the engine mounts. That's the three phases going into the motor. So the motor assembly must be here, which makes sense. You've got the bolts here. So this so really look you can see what the motor is. Let's zoom out a little bit. The motor is literally from there to there. There's nothing. And that literally replaces, that can ultimately replace the engine of your car. That's quite frightening, isn't it? So, my plan is, I want to try, what I want to try first is plan A. Mount this whole unit with the gearbox in the car, first of all, ultimately. That's my plan A. I need to go and I want to measure up the physical dimensions of it. So I don't think I'm going to get the inverter. I don't think I'm going to, where I want to mount it, I don't think the inverter is going to have space for the inverter. I'm going to have to mount that remotely. Which could be an issue with the resolver cabling and everything. Obviously, it couldn't be too far away because the 
inverter harness needs to plug into the resolver they probably could be extended I suppose so if you're good at fabbing up you could remove all this and somehow make your own engine mounts that would save quite a bit of space we're going to leave it here I think for now the next video we'll get the controller out and we'll start seeing about integrating the controller into the inverter let's hopefully we can get a first spin on the floor I've got some little 12 volt batteries I've got some 12 volt batteries, we'll rig some up get about 100 volts on the go somehow, 96 volts see if we can run it on 96 volts just to get the engine, to get the motor spinning then once we're confirmed that the motor's good and running and the controller's doing what it should be doing we can go ahead and start looking in the fabbing some kind of um, mountainous in the car ultimately I've got these sh drive shafts as well for future planning I think as I need things and I can afford it I might start buying them as I need stuff the big expense next will be the battery pack which I'm not really ready for I'm a long way off from needing that yet so hopefully hopefully they'll drop in price and more they'll be more readily available as well I see very very few Nissan Leaf packs on the internet and what I do see they're asking silly money for anyway let's go back to Mr. T and see what he's doing how you doing Mr. T? oh tape measure you say, here you go you're gonna, gonna measure it up are you? 